Uh, I'm guessing that um, your uh, your nine to five Monday to Friday job doesn't have a whole lot to do with metal. No, it doesn't. No, I, I work at a university as well, actually, oh, okay. um, in a secretarial position. But it's really great because it's um, it's nine to five. I've worked so many different jobs in my life. This one's really stable, and uh, yeah, the hours are great. At least I have the weekends to do the metal thing and Absolutely. the evenings. Absolutely. The worst thing for someone in a band is working like the three to eleven shift, <laughs> something like that. It kind of killed it. Absolutely, yeah, because you you pretty much don't get to go and see or or rehearse um, yeah. except on weekends totally or play shows it's more difficult you have to take time off work yeah 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 so the nine to five a lot of people think it's lame but i don't i don't mind it because it works with my lifestyle really well absolutely and and uh there, there's a lot to be said for being able to uh to to say or to know um yeah in three weeks, I will be working nine to five. I don't have to let you know whether I can work that or I can play that show or I can um, go to that show because I already know in three weeks this is what what my hours will be. Exactly. Yeah. the The only biggest downer with having a regular job, like I've been actually working in a temp pool for the last two years, so I would have a lot of work for a certain amount of time and then go without work. And sometimes that works out well for touring, right? Because when you have a steady job, um, you get vacation time, but touring, like if you want to tour for a month or three weeks, it's a little tricky with not being fired. Absolutely. <laughs> from your job. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's a bit of a balance, but that's the only really tricky part. Right. I think. Yeah, for sure. Now, um, have you, uh, at, at this point, have you done a lot of touring with, with Abriosis? Um, yeah, we did, well, not not a whole lot, but we did a tour in the summer. Like, I just, I joined the band um, just over a year ago. Okay. In uh, last October, 2011. We went on one summer tour. Uh, we went out to, where did we go? Edmonton and back. Okay. Yeah, so that was for uh, three, three weeks, I believe. Gotcha. And, yeah. and um now with, uh, you know, going out on that, that summer tour, was that kind of a, uh, a precursor to starting the writing for Vessel, or do you guys already started um, working on the songs for Vessel at that point? Yeah, we had already um, we had already actually started the recording process. Um, oh, wow. I think we had the drums and bass, uh, sorry, drums, yeah, bass and guitar, not completed, but it, it, we we had been recording, and then we came back, and I think there, we had to do some more guitar and then vocals. Okay. But yes, yeah, so we already had the album pretty much done. I might have made a couple lyrical changes, but nothing really, really big. We had it all, all wrapped up at that point. Gotcha. And so, did you road test some of the the songs? Yeah, for sure. And that's really like that's the best way. To, once you're on tour and you're playing your songs every night, it, it really gets ingrained right into you. So that's the best way to to really know them. And I, rehearsing's I, good too, but live really drives it home for sure and i and i guess that playing them live as well um allows you to sort of know whether you're able to perform the songs live or not i know there's a lot of bands who um have written songs and then they go into the studio and record them and then realize oh there's no way we can play we can recreate this live yeah that's true and you know we've always kept that in mind because we don't want to um we want to be able to recreate the album live, basically. We don't want the album to be, you know, have all this really technical stuff that we can't actually do. So we always uh, keep that in mind when in the writing process, too. And then for sure, playing live, you realize, oh, maybe this tempo, maybe it should be a little faster, maybe it should be a little slower. You can kind of work out the kinks. Right. And rehearsal is one thing, you know, you're in your, your cozy little jam space, but when you're playing live, it's definitely a different experience for sure for sure and there's there's a lot more people to make fun of you if you fall flat on your face <laughs> yeah well and there's different pressures right you know you're you're performing you're moving around like when you're in a jam space you can just stand there essentially and and perform but when you're in front of people you're putting on a show so it's it's important to know that you can play the songs um front to back flawlessly while moving around while headbanging while screaming at people <laughs> right 
yeah. Uh, so that, that's just part of it. How, how did you start performing? Um, like, have have you been performing since you were really young, or did performing come a little bit later to you? Um, well, as far as being, yeah, like, I, I joined a metal band, um, I think I was 22, 21 maybe. Um, so since then, that's when I started playing in bands. I, I would jam with friends, like I used to play guitar, don't really do that so much anymore, and we would just play music for fun. Right. Um, but I hadn't been in an actual, you know, what, what you would call a serious band until that age. Okay. So that was uh, a few years ago. But yeah, and since then, uh, yeah, like I said, I've been in Abriosis just for the last year, but I was in another band um, without Mercy for like about five years before that. Okay. Yeah, and we would tour and uh, and all that stuff. So that now, was the first series band I was in. You, uh, without Mercy, you never played here in Thunder Bay, did you? No, okay. no, no, no. Um, with that band, we just toured out to Edmonton, okay. I think. Or actually, uh, Saskatoon. Okay. Yeah. For some reason, I thought that... Uh, that you had played here. I was I was looking at the uh, the Without Mercy uh, album just before I called you, and I was trying to remember whether I'd actually seen you play here or not. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah, no, we never made it that far. Abriosis has, though. I'm not sure if you've met the guys. I have actually. Um, nice. I, uh, I think, uh, in fact, in in one of the interviews I read, um, the, they made mention of playing to 10 people in Northern Ontario, and I'm pretty sure that was the Thunder Bay show they played here. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, gotcha. Not uh, such a good turnout that night. <laughs> yeah, well, unf- the, uh, I think the unfortunate thing was that the, the venue they played at was pretty much on its last legs. Nobody was going no matter what show was oh. playing there, and uh, it was the only one that had any sort of availability at the time, so... Gotcha. But things are better now. That's good. Is that venue still around? No, actually. it's uh, It's been sold, uh, gutted, and is in the process of being turned into condos. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that happens out here, too. In Vancouver, there's a lot of that. Well, I've heard there's a, a lot. Um, it's it's getting very hard for uh, particularly punk bands, anyway, to uh, to play shows in Vancouver. Yeah, you know, that wouldn't surprise me at all. I'm not really that, um, I don't know that much about the punk scene. I'm more involved in the metal scene. Right. Um, but I, I do know, like, we have one steadfast supporter who, who's really helped to carry the scene over the last, you know, 10, 15 years, um, Wendy 13, and she does put on punk shows too. Right. Um, but as far beyond that, beyond the shows that Wendy puts on at Funky Winker Beans, I'm not sure what other venues are supporting punk right now. Yeah. Yeah, probably not too many. No, it's pretty tricky. Like, metal-wise, we're not doing too bad. You know, like, there's... People will complain, but I think really, like, there's there's a good, you know, at least two, three more metal shows a week, so we're not doing that bad, you no, know? No, not at all. <laughs> it's pretty good. But, uh, but, yeah, as far as punk, I, I really don't know. Yeah. It's, it's nice to be in a, a place, I'm sure, that has the population to support two or three metal shows a week uh, if you're yeah. into metal. Um, Thunder Bay, not so much. Uh, one or one or two metal shows a month uh, is about oh, all really? the, is about all they c- the uh, population can handle. I think sometimes. Now, do you find though, like when it, there's less shows like that, like just the one or two a month, is it a strong turnout for it, each one? It's a much better turnout. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the problems we had here was, or and still is, is too many venues. Uh, and not enough people to go to those venues all the time. So, mm-hmm. like at one point, we had five venues. Uh, That's crazy. In you know, kind of o- ongoing, not all, all necessarily playing metal, but there was a show at every venue almost every night. And wow. the population here is only a hundred thousand, and of that hundred thousand, you've got maybe ten thousand who would go to shows, and about half of that who would go to shows regularly. So, right, and, and the smaller shows, too. Yeah, and I mean, if you've got five shows going on at the same night, that's really dividing your <laughs> crowd. And then if you've got three metal shows in one week, um, you know, not everybody can afford to go to all three. So you start getting people picking and choosing. and So, yeah, smaller and smaller crowds is the that's, result. That's, 
That's crazy, you know, like in Vancouver, that would be a good problem to have, a <laughs> whole bunch of, of venues. Um, yeah, it's it's a really strong scene out here. Like, you'll notice, you know, if bands playing on a Monday night, sometimes you'll get a really good turnout, but sometimes not, just because a lot of people are still working right. the Monday to Friday thing. But yeah, it's a really strong scene out here. And do you find that you guys, you get a lot of support? from from other bands it's it seems you know being a, an outsider um and just seeing uh, on facebook it does seem that uh um people are always promoting each other and talking about each other's bands but do, do you find that to be true oh absolutely yeah we all like we all go to each other's shows and that's a funny thing like when i was younger i always thought you know you had fans of music and you had the bands but those lines are really blurred like when you go to a show a lot of the people at the show are in bands themselves or they're musicians or, you know, they're in some other area of of, uh, of the arts, like some capacity. Um, so, yeah, no, it's really everybody supports everyone else. Like, it's pretty awesome. It's very cool. Yeah, and it, it goes, you know, it's it's great because you, you go to a show and you meet a bunch of people in other bands, you just increase that network, and then they come out to your show, and yeah, it's really great. Awesome, and do you um, do you get a chance yourself to go and uh, and see a lot of the bands that are coming in from out of town? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Um, we have a really great venue out here called uh, the Rickshaw. Right. Well, there's a few few really great venues that do the bigger shows, but Rickshaw is one of my personal favorites just because it's an old theater and it's really an intimate sort of um, setup. Like there's a small barricade for the photographers, like the little photographer pit. But it's just a really, like, maybe waist-high okay. little gate. So you're right at the stage if you go to the front. Right. And, like, Suffocation's played there. Nice. Who else? Creator played there. I think it's, like, an 800 capacity. Um, but you're right there. Like, you're right. It's really up close and personal. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. I've always been a fan of that. You want to, you want to, you know, you don't want to. I, I never was really into going to the big arena shows. Right. Kind of thing because it just doesn't. You don't have that connection with the performer. Like when you're that close, you you. It's sort of a, a give and take with the audience and the people on stage. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, do you, um, as a performer, do you uh, do you find that you you draw a lot of energy from the crowd? If you've got a lackluster crowd, your performance doesn't necessarily feel so on. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's really a trick you learn um, over time. Is to try to harness that energy whether the audience is into it or not because actually I had an ex we had an experience um, in Abriosis we played I think it was uh, Medicine Hat I can't remember Medicine Hat or Lethbridge and the crowd was they were sitting down at tables there was maybe two people at the front getting into it and I was kind of like oh man they really hate us you know <laughs> this is a bit rough um, but I was like oh screw it like I'll just we, we gotta rock out we gotta put on a show it's what we're here to do we're going to have fun no matter what. So we just rocked out. And at the end of the night, um, people bought so much merch. Everybody was really into it. They just didn't express it in the way that we expected. Like starting a mosh pit, they were just sitting and watching and listening. Right. But they were really into it. And we got really great feedback after the performance. But at the time, it kind of felt like they weren't digging it. Hmm. So you can never really tell. And I, I know I've seen some bands where the vocalist or other members will start yelling at the crowd, like, what's wrong with you? Get up, you know? Let's move, but I try not to do that because you can never really tell us if they, maybe they're just listening, yeah. <laughs> but they still like it. Yeah, exactly. I actually had, uh, I got heckled for being the old guy at the back of the room holding up the bar <laughs> at one point. Um, oh, no. Uh, and, you know, uh, in his defense, I was one of 10 people in a venue that holds a thousand people. So oh uh, it was pretty obvious that it was a very empty bar, but uh, yeah. um, that's that's my thing is I always stand at the back so that I can watch everything that's going on. He apologized later, but uh, it was it was pretty funny to be called the old guy holding up the ba holding up the bar. Yeah, and you're like, hey, buddy, I bought a ticket. <laughs> I'm here to, here to watch you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny. And, you know, on the other side, as when you're on stage and you get people, like, just beating each other up in the in the pit, that really, uh, like, lights a fire under your ass to, oh, yeah. to, to get that much more into it. And it's, it's really great when you have audience participation and, yeah, you get that direct feedback. 
Definitely. You can tell they're really into it. That's yeah. That's definitely like the best. That's 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 <laughs> the preferred the, method. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, those are the best shows. <laughs> and it gets pretty wild when when that happens. It's kind of a catalyst for more energy. Right. It kind of feeds the it feeds you, and then your energy feeds back into the crowd. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's a great feeling. Um, now, uh, surrounding Vessel, I know you're going to be um, putting the the uh, EP up for free download on February 1st. Are you going yes. to be? Uh, uh, are there plans at this point to do uh, any sort of touring to support it, or is that still kind of um, on hold at this point? Um, we're definitely going to start touring. Um, at some point, <laughs> we don't have a set date right now. Right. Um, we're actually funny enough. We're working on new material uh, right now. I know we're just releasing the album, so it might seem kind of funny, but we just want to keep keep it fresh. Absolutely. Keep new material coming. So we've we're in the writing process right now, and uh, yeah, we recorded a couple um, cover videos also last week. So we'll be releasing those. Excellent. In the next little while, that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Now, um, speaking of cover videos, uh, yep. uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you had done some cover videos for YouTube as yep. well uh, yourself prior to, was it prior to joining uh, Abriosis or even just while you were in the yeah. band? Uh, both. Yeah, I, I guess I still make them. I haven't made one in a while. It's been maybe six months or so. Um, but yeah, it's been it's something I've been doing for maybe six years or so. Gotcha. Off and on. I don't put them out really regularly or consistently, but I've been doing it over the years. Very cool. And um, now, when you were uh, when you were uh, joining Abriosis, was that was that something that they had uh, did the band know you um, sort of prior to uh, to you joining? Yeah. Well, you know, as we were talking about before, like bands will go to each other's shows and things like that so we did know I knew I knew about Abriosis um, before I joined and I was really into their music we actually played a show when I was in My Felt Mercy we played a show with them and uh, that sort of uh, that's when I picked up their their previous album Tattered and Bound right and um, and I found out that they needed a vocalist so I tried out <laughs> yeah but yeah we had we knew of each other just from the metal scene right because okay. it, it is a small scene, right? Like it's, I mean, it's big, but everybody knows each other. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's not like you the uh, that everybody is segregated in the metal scene. They're all kind of intertwined one way or another. Yeah, and you know that's what's great about it. Like you, you know, like last night I went out to a, a show at our regular local bar, um, Funky Winker Beans. Just went by myself and no ton of people there. It's, it's really nice. You can just go out and. You just see your friends there because that's where everybody hangs out. Right. It's pretty cool. Uh, now, uh, talking about uh, uh, writing mode for uh, for some some new uh, tunes, do you yeah. uh, do you all get together to write, or are you uh, sort of um, I've got you know somebody might have this, or you might have a vocal line that you want to try out, uh, and you bring it to the band, or is everything kind of hashed out in the in the jam room? Um, a bit of both. It, it always generally starts with our guitarist, Taylor. Right. He'll come up with some riffs or some ideas or even like a good chunk of a song and then show us. And then it just works off of that. And we all give feedback. Um, generally, you know, it's always actually been this way so far. Um, I've never come up with lyric or vocal ideas until the songs already developed musically. Okay. Like, I mean, I have ideas for songs, but I don't write out a song previous because I really try to work off of the feeling that I'm getting from each individual song. Okay. I don't really want to force my words into a song if it doesn't feel right, so I wait till the, the music's done and then just use that as inspiration for the lyrics. Very cool. So you're, you're not one of those people who has a uh, notebook upon notebook full of lyric ideas? No. No, I, I don't. Um, I do sometimes write some things down, but I I really try to just lock myself in my room, basically, like when the song is done, and then just keep working on it incessantly until it's done, um, when that time comes, you know. Right. Now, um, do you think that there'll be uh, a 
a, a new full length f from Abriosis, or is this going to be for another EP, or uh, um, or is this a, a case of we'll we'll get some stuff written and and see where it goes? Yeah, I think that's really really the plan there. You know, we were thinking about releasing the thing about releasing an EP is that you um, you know, especially financially, it's easier to do them more frequently, right? Um, because the cost of of recording and printing albums and all these, like there's a lot of associated costs with that whole process. Mm -hmm. um, it's really pretty heavy when you do a full length. And so by doing an EP, you're sort of cutting that chunk in half essentially. So it's easier to do an EP every year as opposed to a full length every two years. Right. But we're still figuring that out, you know. Um, as far as Vessel, our, our next plan for that, we'd really like to release a record um, with the same four songs, but just as a way to highlight the artwork right. on the album. So that's always been something that's really important part of, of the album as a whole is the artwork. Right. I was I, I was actually going to uh to ask if there was any plan to uh to possibly put it out on vinyl. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And just with the download card too, you know, because a lot of people like collecting mm -hmm. vinyl but they don't necessarily listen to the right. record itself. So Yeah. But there's just something so so beautiful about vinyl. Absolutely. And, and I collect. It, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that it it I, it does actually sound better. There there definitely is a sound difference um, between yes. uh, MP3 and vinyl. It's just it, it. I think it's all about the convenience with MP3 for sure. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you were going to say you're you're a vinyl collector as well. Oh, I was, yeah. Since I was a kid, I've had some albums, mostly Alice Cooper and Led Zeppelin, and that kind of. <laughs> Rock, rock music, but unfortunately, my cat. I still have the the album or the the records, but my cat destroyed them. <laughs> <laughs> sad story. <laughs> that is a pretty sad story. But I can't can't get rid of them. <laughs> no, fair enough. They sort of just become a part of you, I guess. No, I, I mean CDs are still like I still feel like I'm missing them now. I have a pretty decent collection of those too, but mm -hmm. they're not as prevalent. Like it's, everything's digital now, right? Yeah. But even CD form, at least you still can hold the booklet in your hand and yes. read through the words and see the artwork. And yeah, that's something that I think a lot of bands really um, don't want to lose. Mm -hmm. You know, so even with uh, even with like with us, like we keep everything free on the net because bottom line, we just want people to hear our music. Right. We want to expand our fan base um, as much as we can. Um, I actually forgot what I was just saying, but. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> but, but you, you also you all you're also still um, printing CDs so that people can have something physical. Exactly, yeah, and the artwork is really important. So, like with with releasing vinyl, eventually we want to keep that sort of physical copy around right. in some form or another. Absolutely, that's very cool. Well, Alexis, thanks so much for taking time to speak to me today. I really appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me.